What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be adding a simple C-sharp script to a couple of game objects. So we're going to make them just a little bit alive in the world, giving them this little rotation effect here. And then we're going to make a prefab of those so that we can continuously use that over and over again. So if you're enjoying the series, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell notification icon, and yeah, so let's just, let's do it. So if you were following along in the last video, we used Blender to create a 3D model of a coin for us to use in our game. And if you're brand new to using Blender, um, I, I know it's kind of difficult to try to wrap your head around how to kind of maneuver through the program and create these objects. So if you manage to follow along and create this coin, good job, because it can definitely be difficult. It gets a lot easier once you start learning all of the, all of the shortcut keys and whatnot and figuring out how to create these objects. Um, if you decided that you didn't want to learn how to do this at all, um, I did leave a link in the video description to download uh, the, the coin object that I created, and, we can, and you can use that in your game if you like. Um, also, I went ahead and I created three more game objects for us to use. Um, I created a diamond, I created an hourglass, and a key. Uh, you'll see that these are still kind of white in the objects. That's because I didn't add any materials to these these parts of the these parts of the game objects, um, and we'll add those in in Blender. Um, but uh, I'll leave a link in the description to download this objects folder. Just be sure to unzip it before you import it into Unity, um, and then you can just click and drag that objects folder into the assets folder. So. Um, go ahead and download those if you like, or if you want to try and recreate those objects yourself in Blender, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to be uh, creating any videos on how I made those, uh, but there are definitely a bunch of resources online that you can use to, to help you along that path. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a couple of folders in here to just kind of organize this a little bit or start the organization process. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, uh, create a new folder, and we're going to call this folder scripts. And then we're just going to put all of our scripts moving forward into this folder. So let's go ahead and drag that death pit script in here. And then I also want to create a folder to hold all of those uh, downloaded assets from the asset store as well, just so that they're kind of out of our way in our asset folder. So I'm going to call this folder Unity Assets. And we're just going to drag this third person controller uh, folder in, where did I put it? Over here. Uh, the third person controller folder into that assets folder, the character, um, the character asset into that assets, and then this sci-fi platform folder as well. And we're going to go back and use that sci-fi platforms folder to just kind of create more levels and whatnot in the future. But the other ones we're not we're not ever going to use again in this series, so we can just kind of tuck those away into this folder here. Um, I also want to create one more folder for us to have. Uh, we're going to call this uh, prefab. And if you don't know what a prefab is, basically it's just a pre-created object um, that we can uh, basically reuse over and over and over again um, without needing to change all the components every single time we want to use. A specific object and I'll, I'll show you what I mean here in a minute um, but anyways let's let's go ahead and get started with this so the first thing I want to do is I want to bring this coin into our scene view here and it should drop right directly onto um, this platform for us so if we hit play right now you'll see that this coin doesn't do anything at all in the least bit and if we if we walk into it, we just kind of walk through it. We don't even knock it over or anything like that. It's just kind of there. So the first thing that I want to do, and we're going to do this to all of the all four of the game objects that we have, is we're just going to give it like a simple rotation to 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 just liven it up in the scene a little bit, make it look like it's supposed to do something. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Um, one of one, one of which, which is a pretty easy way of doing this, is just go into animation tab and create a new animation for it. And we can do that just by rotating it on the Y axis here um, in our animations tab. Um, 
But I don't want to do it that way just because of the fact that if we do do it that way, we would have to go through each of these objects and create a new animation for each and every one of those. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new script to do that. And that way we can just click and drag that script onto each game object that we want to rotate. So let's go into our scripts folder. We're going to right click, create a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this object rotation. And we can wait for that to compile after we hit enter. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that onto our coin right here like that. So first thing we want to do once we open it is I want to get rid of this entire section right here. We're not going to use any of that at all. Um, we're only going to be using the update. So um, first I want to set a variable to tell the coin how fast we want it to rotate. And I want that variable to be able to be changed in the inspector because what we can do is we can change it in the inspector and change the speed of the rotation um, however we want it to be and then set it to whatever we want there. So let's go ahead and create a public uh, float and let's call this rotation speed. And I want to give that a default value of 1 just so that it has that rotation already on there. Um, so now in our update, um, what we want to do is we want to access that transform component, and then there's already a function in here to uh, create a rotation for us. And we're not going to be using transform.rotation um, like we normally would for like a transform position to set the position, because we don't want to set the rotation to anything. We want to add rotation to it. So we're going to use transform.rotate like that. And this is going to ask for, this is a vector, uh, a vector three that we, that, that we can use. So it's going to be looking for an X, a Y, and a Z like that. So, and basically what we want to do is we want to put this rotation speed variable into that, that Y section right here. So it'll be rotating at a speed of one on the Y axis. So, and that's really all we need to do for this script. So we can actually just go ahead and save this right now. Go back into uh, Unity, wait for it to compile for a moment. And then if we hit play, you'll see down here in the scripts, the object rotation script, it's got the rotation speed of one. So if we hit play, this, uh, this coin should be rotating. So yeah, there it is rotating uh, pretty slowly actually. So I'm gonna minimize this really quick. Um, and we can change the speed right here. We can, if we click, the click and drag the rotation variable itself, we can change that speed like this. And the higher number we go, the faster it's gonna rotate. And then also if we go into the negatives, it'll actually start rotating in a counterclockwise direction. So, um, Let's go ahead and set this to a to a speed that we want it to. Let's figure out about how fast we want this to go. Oh, that's a little too fast. Okay, so five seems to be about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit play mode and I'm gonna change this to five. Because anything that we change while we're in play mode is not gonna reflect after we get out of play mode. So we gotta make sure that we change that to five outside of play mode. So that's all I really wanna do with this at the moment. So let's go ahead and create a prefab of this. Um, and the way we do that is just go into the prefabs folder and click and drag that coin from our hierarchy into this prefabs folder. Now, because we're already technically using a prefab, it's gonna ask this question right here. It's gonna ask if we wanna create a new original prefab or a variant of this prefab. I just wanna create an original prefab. So, and the re what I mean by it's already a prefab is all of these are already prefabs. They have all of these additional components to them um, as opposed to just the, just the mesh itself. So I want to go ahead and do that to all three of these as well. And it's just as easy as uh, doing that coin. All we have to do is drag these guys into our scene just like that. And that key is a little bit bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, so I'm going to actually just go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Let's try 0.75, see if that's good. Yeah, that looks better. So yeah, in Blender, I guess I made it just a little bit bigger than I 
really wanted to. So, um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and just start adding that script onto um, these objects up in our hierarchy. So we can go up to the key, drag this onto the key, and then drag it onto the hourglass, and then we can drag it onto the diamond. Now, all of these are always going to have this rotation speed of 1 set to default. So if you want them to be rotating any faster than that, we need to change that. Um, so let's go ahead and look at how this looks right now as it is. And, you know, all of those actually look fine for me. Um, I do want the key to be moving a little bit faster. But the, uh, the hourglass and um, the diamond, I, I like the rotation speed on those. But that coin can definitely be a little bit faster. Let's bump the coin, or not the coin, the key. Um, I'm just going to say up to two. I don't want it too awful much faster. Let's take a look at that now, see what that looks like. So that's a lot better. I like that. So now all we have to do is go back into our prefabs folder and just click and drag all of these into that prefabs folder. And be sure to create an, an original prefab of these as well. So just like that. So now we have all of these that we can use in our game as many of them as we want, and if we hit play, all of these will have that same rotation on them already for us. So that's really good. Um, so yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video um, today. So if you are enjoying the series, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Uh, let me know if you wanna add something to the game. Let me know um, what you think that you could do better in the game or anything like that, change something, whatever, or just say hi, you know, I, I, I like responding to, uh, to you guys in the comment section. It makes me feel like people are actually watching these videos. Um, so yeah, if you're enjoying the series, I will, uh, I'll see you next time.